Welcome to the Prince Armory Academy. This tutorial will demonstrate the assembly of a leather breastplate that is part of our Warrior series. If you would like to build this yourself, head over to the Academy and grab the pattern, or if you would like to build the full suit, grab the discounted bundle. This series is specifically designed for beginners and it couldn't be easier to put together. All you need is some leather, rivets, a hammer, and a few buckles, and you'll be able to build something fun while learning the basics of leather crafting and armor crafting. For the full explanations on printing, fitting, and many of the other basic steps, please watch the existing and upcoming videos supplied in the full Getting Started series. The build starts by printing the patterns and then tracing everything out onto the leather. Just be sure to do a test fit and a mock-up before committing materials to your own project. I'll typically separate the hide into smaller chunks with a utility knife and then cut out the rest with shears from there. In this case, I'm using 9 to 10 ounce vegetable tan leather from Weaver Leather. The leather and many of the tools you'll see in this series can be found at Weaver Leather's online store which has everything you need to delve into this new craft. They have a massive selection of leather, tools, hardware, and much more, as well as great prices. And if you'd like to help support our channel, you can use the affiliate link in the description below to stock up on your leather supplies for your next build. At this stage you will normally decide what tooling and decoration to apply to the leather pieces. Since I want to keep this series simple, I'm not doing any elaborate designs or crafting on this piece. There will be plenty of that in the more advanced builds, but that shouldn't stop you from doing some tooling or carving of your own if you're up to the challenge. I do however recommend that you at least bevel the edges of all your pieces. And you can use a stitching groover to give an optional simple border detail as well. You will also need to mark and punch the holes. You can use something like a handheld rotary punch or a hole punch with interchangeable heads which can be picked up very affordably. Now we can finally start putting everything together. There are four main components to this project, the chest plate, the back plate, and the lower abdominal and lower back plate. Start the assembly by riveting the center points of part A and C together. You'll use medium double capped rivets for most of the assembly which can also be found at Weaver Leather. You can pick up a rivet setter for a dollar or two or you can simply set the rivets flat directly with your hammer. You can set each rivet as you go one at a time, but in my case I'm snapping each rivet into place along one side of the pectoral pieces labeled B and setting them all in one go.
Then you'll do the same for the other side. You'll notice as the pieces come together, a bit of shape begins to emerge on the breastplate front. If you're setting the rivets from the front with a setter, you'll just invert the shape when you're done riveting them together. I noticed that one of the rivets did not set very well, so I'm just going to drill it out from the back and replace the rivet. I know I said this piece doesn't require any fancy tooling or shaping, and it's not mandatory here, but a little bit of effort while the leather is still damp to give it a little bit of a dome is worth the effort. You can use any firm ball or domed shape object to aid in the forming. And just for a little extra finesse at the end, I'll use a flat face of a hammer to planish the leather between the rivets to help average out the lines and eliminate the wavy trim effect I call bacon edges. Next, we'll need to assemble the lower abdominal plate. I'm overlapping the side plates over the middle plate and pre-snapping the rivets so that I can set them all in one go again. And then moving on to the back plate, I will repeat the riveting process. This time overlapping the center over the side panels and then setting the rivets again at once. I'll give the back plate just a little bit of shape here too.
The last piece is to assemble the lower back plate, which is basically assembled identical to the front with the sides overlapping the middle plate. Before I complete the assembly, I'm going to go ahead and dye these parts while they're still manageable. To color the piece, I'm using a black pro oil dye and sealing it with an acrylic top coat. For those of you looking to build this as fast as possible, and this is just a bonus tip, but you should be aware that you can use Latigo and other pre-dyed leather and skip the dye and finish steps entirely, but there is a trade-off, which is that these leathers do not accept tooling or shaping very well. For the final assembly, the top and bottom components are connected with a small retaining strap to allow for just a little bit of extra flexibility. If this is your first project ever, I'm not going to ask you to buy a whole separate hide just for a little strap. You can go ahead and use vegetable tan leather for this, but if you do have the option, or if you can get your hands on some scrap, go ahead and use something a little bit more supple. In my case, I'm using some kangaroo leather, which is very thin, but still very strong. To tie it all together, just rivet each strap to the bottom plates first and then connect it to the top plates.
The front and the back plates are connected by buckles on the sides and the top to give some adjustability. If you're not sure how to make buckle straps, there is a dedicated video on it, as well as a free pattern pack of assorted strap styles available on the Academy. To determine the buckle placement, either wear the piece and have someone help you mark the holes, or put it on a mannequin with similar dimensions as yours and then mark them yourself. For the finishing touches, I'm scuffing the gloss down from the sheen with a Scotch-Brite pad. You can see this technique demonstrated more fully in the previous build video for the Warrior Helmet. So now we have the helmet and the breastplate finished. The next build in this Warrior series will be for the shoulder pauldrons, so click the subscribe and notification bell to see when it drops. And keep an eye out to see the full reveal when the suit is finished. If you have any requests for future builds or technique demonstrations, please drop a comment below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial.